Hi guys, my name is Evan Herman and this is Lasting Legacy Show. This is my co-host Steven Gunn and today we got another special co-host. It is the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> Matt Moore, president of YBT. Matt, thank you for joining us today oh, as our co-host. Well, I am humbled. I don't think I've ever been introduced that way before. So <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a first for me. Um, oh my gosh, uh, first of all, I gotta say, you guys missed an excellent seminar. Wow. Jerry Robinson, who's here with us today, he was an excellent keynote speaker. And Fantastic. I brought him in, to Oklahoma, to Tulsa specifically, to speak on something that is a growing, developing technology that is gonna change the world, my personal opinion. Sure. And, and I think it's going to, you know, we're on the, the lasting legacy show here. Right, so right, right. it's going to affect people's legacies in my personal it has. opinion. It has, it already has. I mean, That's people right. made tons of money off of it. But, yeah. but the technology that I'm talking about is blockchain technology. And some people also know Bitcoin, which is built on blockchain technology. Mm -hmm. But uh, Jerry came down and he spoke on cryptocurrencies. And with the exponential and compounding growth of technology, uh, I think Jerry really hit it home to the business community because we had a, a room full of entrepreneurs and business owners who wanted to hear about how is it gonna affect the world? How, how is it gonna affect trade? And, and what should we do you know, to, to be ahead of this? How can we get right. involved you know, and, and stay on top of the game? So um, Jerry, I first, I wanna ask you a question. Sure. Um, for those who are unfamiliar with blockchain and Bitcoin and the technology, I mean, cause there's a lot of cryptocurrencies out there and a lot of them have different specialties. Mm -hmm. But just to simplify the best you can, um, in, to summarize, what is Bitcoin and why should people care? Yeah, Bitcoin is basically the world's first decentralized digital currency. And by decentralized, what that means is that there is no central authority that oversees it. Yeah. So there is no third party administrator. There is no third party that takes a cut between every transaction. Uh, it allows anyone anywhere to send money to anyone anywhere uh, without anyone's permission. Uh, no one needs to have permission to do this. You don't have to uh, receive any kind of, uh, you know, uh, no one has to sign off on this. And so, you know, you think about it, for example, if you wanted to send, say, $10 million from New York City to London, uh, the quickest way to actually have that cash show up in London, the cash itself, would be to uh, fly it on a plane. Uh, that would be the quickest uh, way to do it. You could wire it but it's, it would still take time for it to translate That's into the right. cash. Mm -hmm. With Bitcoin, it can be very quick. And so as we see more use cases uh, rising, we see that Bitcoin and the technology that undergirds it blockchain becoming um, kind of a insurmountable thing to the, to the existing order. Uh, it's something that they can't quite stop, the, you know, the current authorities, they can't stop it. And so it's a, it's a very fascinating technology that I think, you know, everyone, believers, unbelievers, it, 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 it's interesting to all of us. You know, sure. There's certainly an interesting uh, angle to it. Yeah, well, I, I got to say, uh, Jerry, he has a website and he has a, a company called followthemoney.com. And he not only knows a lot about cryptocurrency, but all sorts of information about investing. And so um, considering legacy and considering uh, people taking their money and, and taking their lives and, and, yeah. and building a lasting legacy. Um, where do you see cryptocurrencies in the future, five, 10 years from now, playing a part in people's financial lives? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, in their financial lives, um, first of all, I think that cryptocurrencies are going to eventually become much more widely adopted. I think you'll see people using them for all manner of purposes. Currency is really just the first app of blockchain technology. Yeah. So I think it's um, like we had spoken last night, we talked about HTTP protocol, for example. No one's really excited about HTTP, but they like YouTube, right? Or they like the app, they like uh, Facebook, they like Twitter. Mm -hmm. So they like what it can do, but they may not necessarily like it. So right now we're in the phase where blockchain is trying to be understood. It would be the same thing if we were trying to understand TCP IP protocol, which right. is undergirds email. So nobody cares about the underlying, and uh, except for technologists, you know, and, and, and computer scientists. It's like, like a send it, it works, yeah. right? Yeah. So I, I think we're at this phase where people are, you know, the people who are actually creating the apps are trying to figure out the, the under, underlying technology, 
and we're going to see it evolve. So there's going to be many, many different apps that people can use related to blockchain over the next five to ten years. I think people who are investors, uh, they, want to, they want to seek out these apps and understand which ones may become large. For example, can you find the Facebook? Can you find the Google? Can you right. find the Twitter early? Yeah. And we're going to have those. So blockchain or Bitcoin was certainly an app on blockchain that exploded. Right. Uh, what's the next one? You know, what's the next app that's going to revolutionize the world? And so I think, uh, I think over the next five to ten years, you're going to see a lot of wealth transferred, a lot of wealth created from people who are paying attention to this. Right now, Bitcoin composes a very small amount of the market capitalization globally. So the stock market is enormous, the bond market is enormous, the gold market is large. Bitcoin's minuscule. Uh, so I think as you slowly see financial advisors telling their clients, hey, let's put some money into Bitcoin perhaps, you're going to start seeing the slow evolution of institutional large of financial institution money flowing into Bitcoin yeah. and uh, into other blockchain projects. And it's just going to inflate the prices of these things because many of them, like Bitcoin, are finite by nature and the fact that you only have 21 million. So you can't create any more Bitcoin. That's all you have. So you have to deal with that limited supply. So any increase in demand, whatever that source is, uh, suddenly spikes the price. Yeah. So I think you're going to see higher prices. I think people who've invested, you know, I was an early investor. I've been very happy with the returns. I think you're going to continue to see the, that kind of you know, those kind of returns. Are you looking to get married? Suit Connection is having an awesome wedding special. Buy four suits or tuxedos at $200 or more and receive free dress shirts and ties. Search for them on Facebook by typing Suit Connection Tulsa or stop by at 61st and Sheridan in Tulsa. Do you suffer with migraines, seizures, neuropathy, dementia, or movement disorders? discover an independent concierge neurology practice with treatment from a Christian perspective by Dr. George Gonzalez. Let me ask you, for a guy who knows absolutely nothing about Bitcoin, blockchain, like I'm as dumb as a box of rocks when it comes to the subject, where's the starting point for a guy like me to start learning? Yeah. And when I read something that I'll understand it, not just like, okay, I don't understand what I'm reading. Yeah, I think, I think this, the simple way to think about it is, uh, is just really to try to understand it conceptually. I mean, again, uh, you use the internet, right. right? You use email, right? Correct. So you're dealing with protocols. That's mm -hmm. all you're dealing with. Uh, you're dealing with applications built upon those protocols. And so uh, it's simply thinking of it as a protocol. Uh, it's simply thinking of it as, uh, you know, okay, this is a protocol where apps are being built upon. So, block, or so Bitcoin is simply an application. That's okay. really all that it is. Uh, so you're going, probably over the next five to 10 years, you're gonna find applications on Bitcoin or on blockchain that you like. Uh, and, uh, and as we told the group last night, by the time that happens, mm -hmm. it'll be too late to yeah. be an early investor, right? right. I think uh, for people who want to leave a last, lasting legacy, you know, one thing that they can look at is perhaps, you know, taking a portion, a small portion of their capital, of course, underneath the advice of a financial advisor, Obviously, not, not yeah. listening, not taking their advice from TV or sure. uh, AM radio, yeah. but uh, talking to a trusted financial advisor, maybe considering that. I think, I think that's what we're going to see over time. So is there a place that, you know, people can, can learn and dive into this on your website? Do you have material that they can download or, or yeah. website they can go to? Yeah, so, so we, you know, we do the hard research. We've created it. We manage a portfolio of 10 different cryptocurrencies. Uh, Bitcoin is one of them. We mentioned a couple of them last night at the speech. And uh, so we provide a lot of insight into that. We have a lot of videos that people can watch on our website, followthemoney.com. We have a lot of podcasts we've done. I think listening to podcasts are a fantastic way to learn this stuff. Sure. But uh, we also have, a, as I mentioned, a portfolio. People can access that on followthemoney.com. They can find out which ones have we invested in. We talked about last night. I mean, not, not, to, be, uh, not to be overt or anything here, but I mean, we're talking about massive returns. Just one cryptocurrency that I invested in back in 2013 was up 150,000% as, wow. uh, as of uh, earlier, at the end of 2017. I mean, that's, you can't get those kinds that's, of returns yeah, yeah. anywhere. Wow. So, so spending a little bit of time scratching the surface on this. Learning. Would, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, books, library. Uh, but but I, I would say there's really no magic bullet. You really have to kind of get your head around how protocols work and understanding that. It's a simple, another way to, to make this simple is to say that a protocol is to communication what a programming language 
is to computation. We all understand that programming languages control computers. Right. Well, the protocols control communication sure. networks. And that's really what is so unique about blockchain and specifically Bitcoin is that it's a crypt it's based on cryptography. Yeah. Uh, and so it's a it's a very uh, novel, unique, powerful technology that we still don't fully understand uh, how it's going to impact the world, but we know it's we know it's paradigm shifting. Hi, my name is Matt Moore, president of the Young Businessmen of Tulsa. I pray that this program is a blessing to you and that it inspires you to grow in both your business and personal life. Did you know that many people, both young and old, hold a mentality that their success is all about them? When in reality, we know that our success is dependent on how well we can serve and meet the needs of others. Owning a business is a huge responsibility and success is very important for not only you, but also your employees and your community. If our community is going to continue to thrive, we need to be proactive in promoting a business community that's focused on being excellent stewards in all areas of life so we can create lasting legacies. Today, we have a fantastic opportunity in front of us that could really take our city and community to the next level. Each program we air has the potential to reach over one million households, but in order to do this, we need to reach an extra $1,600 in monthly reoccurring giving. YBT is looking for two types of partners, those who can pledge $9 a month and those who can pledge $19 a month. Not only will we continue to share our Christ-centered message, but in order to keep with the spirit of YBT, a portion of each monthly pledge that you give will benefit our monthly Pay It Forward projects in order to help give back to our city. If you decide to pledge $19 a month, we will have your name scroll at the bottom of the screen on each program as a proud supporter. Every pledge is a tax-deductible donation. Will you help me make a bigger difference in our city? YBT has a track record of creating better leaders, and we have raised well over $145,000 for community projects since our conception. Join us as a co-producer as we take this message and program across the airwaves. Help us steward a message that will literally change people's lives forever. To make your pledge, please visit www patreon.com forward slash YBT. So let's take kind of just a step back a little bit here. Now tell, tell us just a little bit about how yourself. Like how did you come into mm -hmm. this sequence of getting into you know, cryptocurrencies, blockchain? How, like, just a little uh, more about your, like your background. Yeah, 30 second spiel. I was born and raised as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, I came out of that cult in uh, 19... <laughs> <laughs> I came out of that cult in 1994. I was oh, born oh. again. <laughs> yeah. Well, You're I mean, starting to sweat a little true. bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I tell you, uh, there are loving people. I mean, when a Jehovah's Witness comes to your door, I mean, you have somebody who is literally on your doorstep, you know, begging to know the truth. That's right. right? And so, That's right. and had someone in my early years, a loving Christian, had not instead tried to prove that I was wrong or had not tried to slam the door in my face, but had lovingly approached me and said, hey, let me show you some things, you know, in a loving way, not to, not to denigrate you right. or make you feel stupid. And I think, so today I have that same passion for, for them, that compassion. Cool. But anyway, I, I was raised in that. I was born again uh, whenever I was about 17 years old. I went to the Uni University of Tulsa, really had a passion for economics and also how economics and theology crossed. I was really interested in that particular intersection. Yeah. Uh, and then I slowly got involved in uh, economics. I became an economist. Uh, I've been trading for many, many years, an investor. Uh, but I, I stay away from investment advice, financial advice. I'm not sure. an advisor. I just, right. I'm, a, I'm an investor. Yeah. I invest for myself. Right. And I share my ideas with others. Um, and so that's how I got into it. Uh, cryptocurrencies I stumbled into in 20, I traded my first stock in 1996. I traded my first option, stock option in 2002. And then in 2013, I was introduced to cryptocurrencies by a fellow friend who had bought Bitcoin at 25 cents. And he said, you must buy he's Bitcoin. He's doing good now. Yeah. yeah, he's pretty happy. <laughs> well, I mean, on that topic though, I mean, wouldn't you agree though, even though we had this massive price spike in 2017 and we had somewhat of a downfall, I mean, A, we're still up in price yeah. uh, in the cryptocurrency market, but people can still take a small amount of money, throw it in there, mm -hmm. walk away from it, and you know, five years from now, I mean, who knows what kind of returns? I mean, it, we're still early, aren't we? It's like it's like the internet, nineteen early nineteen nineties. Extremely, it's, it's very akin to that. And like I've said, uh, we began on our podcast, the Follow the Money podcast, uh, at our website. We began telling people, just 
go out and buy a Bitcoin. Just go out and buy one just for the experience of it. This was back, you know, early on when they were 200 bucks. You could buy one. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. right. <laughs> now today, that's pretty, you know, that's pretty oh, expensive today. <laughs> but just, just being able to actually familiarize yourself with the new technology, to actually purchase one, yeah. I think just going through that process is very informative. Um, so, yeah, I, I, think, I think over time, uh, let's back to your question again. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, really the question was, I mean, people, there's not, I mean, yes, it is a volatile market. Yes. But you can take such a small amount of money, put it in there, mm. and since we're still early in the game, yeah. still see great returns. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think diversifying, you know, because which horse is going to win? Which yeah, app right. is going to win out? How, yeah. many, how many cryptocurrencies are there? I mean, there's yeah. probably 1,500 wow. or more than yeah, that. And you can create one very simply. You wow. know, yeah. Anyone can. Uh, so, you know, there's going to be many, but it doesn't mean anything. I mean, there's uh, it really de depends on which coins are going to have demand. Sure. And that all depends upon the function and the structure of the coin. So, you know, Bitcoin is certainly one brand recognition all around the world. Everybody knows what it is. It's a very small market. So I think having a little exposure to that as an investor is a smart idea. Uh, and then also, you know, kind of doing your due diligence, looking at other cryptocurrencies, realizing that about 98% of the coins that are out there are scams. They're complete scams. Uh, it's, a, it's a market that's rife uh, with uh, corruption. Uh, but also realizing that this is a real fundamental technology that's yeah. life-altering. Yeah. And so trying to find those cryptocurrencies that may uh, end up winning in the end we have a list of about 10 we've come up with, yeah. and those are what we invest in. Well, that's kind of like the dot-com boom when you had pets.com and people were paying, yes. you know, enormous amounts of money for, mm -hmm. for this stuff. But then you also had Amazon. Yeah, then you had Amazon, yeah. You had Amazon, Yeah, right. absolutely. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So. yeah. Now, recently, um, we had, I mean, last week, I think it was, there was a hack on Bitcoin. So, like, what, can you talk a little bit kind of how, the, how does that kind of thing happen when the blockchain technology, what, what kind of... How does that kind of thing even come up? Yeah, most of the hacking is occurring around it, on the exchange, at the exchange okay. level. So it's not really the blockchain itself that's being hacked. There was even a, a hack of uh, one of the smart contracts on top of Ethereum, for those familiar with that. But it wasn't a hack of Ethereum, it was a hack yeah. of, of, a, of a layer on top of yeah. Ethereum. So these, these uh, cryptocurrencies are not really hacked. Uh, the currencies where they're held, like the bank is robbed, right? right? So the bank may get robbed, but it doesn't mean the money itself is corrupt. It sure, just sure. means that people want the money. I just right? yeah. figure for those who don't understand that, sure. of giving yeah. some, some depth yeah. to what that really means. Yeah, but I don't think any in individual who has, you know, on their wall or the, the entire network, I should say, has been hacked. Because my understanding is in order to hack the entire network, you almost have to have the same amount of commu computing power as you do that as, the, the, as the, the network, network, as the entire network is using. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 This program is made possible by the generous support of The Demand Project, a nonprofit organization fighting to eradicate sex trafficking and the sexual exploitation of children. To find out how you can help, please visit thedemandproject.org today. Could your business or organization benefit from TV advertising? KGEB Tulsa TV 53 broadcasts from the campus of Oral Roberts University and reaches the greater Tulsa metro. Contact us for more info at 918-488-5300. Part of lasting legacies is talking about the legacy that you want to leave. Mm. And being an investor and regarding this show, what advice would you give to someone who's, you know, at the beginning stages of investing or middle stages or end mm -hmm. for their family, for them to leave a lasting legacy? But then also the follow-up question after that that I would want you to answer would also be um, with you, what legacy are you wanting to leave? At, at the end of the day, you know, barring what God says, what do you want people to say about you? Yeah, I think when it comes to the individual who's watching or listening and they're thinking, how do I leave a legacy with my investing? You know, I think, of course, to remember that money is the chief competitor for our hearts. Yeah. And there is no competitor for our hearts that's greater than money. Uh, and God knows this. And he puts it in his book. That's why money is, you know, there's 2,350 plus verses about money in the Bible, right? Not because God wants us all to be filthy rich, but because he wants us to understand that this is a very... Uh, dangerous topic for humanity. Right. Uh, it, it, it's a very dangerous topic. And so th therefore we need to have a biblical view of money. And so I would say it begins with that. Uh, we have something called our five levels of financial freedom. It's something my wife and I did. We achieve financial freedom through these five levels. They're free on our website, followthemoney.com forward slash five levels. And it begins, what we learned is that you, you begin with charitable giving. So many people 
uh, tend to think of charitable giving as something they do eventually. I'll do that when I write my will. I'll do that when I have yeah. enough money to have an estate plan, right? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It's the exact opposite. The exact opposite is, is you begin with the end in mind and you say, what is my purpose of accumulating money? Why am I accumulating money? Right. And then when you have your why, it's very powerful. I have a trader friend, for example, who likes to trade the markets. He's a commodities trader and he gives the first $100 to God, you know, so he'll trade and he'll, the first $100 he makes it. So if he doesn't make any money, then, you know, he doesn't give any money. And of course that's, that strains him. And so he wants to always be giving the first fruits. I think little things like that, little adjustments in your yeah, mind can be very good. powerful. And I think also thinking outside of the box, you know, today we live in a society that teaches you, you go to school, you go work for 40 years, you get the time X, you retire, and hopefully you don't get fired along the way. And I think uh, to think differently about that, maybe to think about instead of having one paycheck or one W-2 income stream, uh, maybe having multiple income streams. We teach the importance of having multiple streams of yeah. income. Uh, over time, my wife and I have built several. That could be real estate. They all come from many different places, but real estate, uh, you know, your own business, uh, paper assets, you can generate money in many different ways. So thinking about it that way. Now personally, uh, as, as uh, when I think about what I want to leave as a legacy, you know, the, when the Lord prompts you, when the Lord speaks to you, you do what He says. Yeah. Um, you may end up not being a success in the, world, in the eyes of the world, right? You do what He says. Right. Uh, Noah looked like a pretty big failure, you know. Uh, <laughs> Abraham, Abraham looked like a pretty big failure. So when you obey God, yeah. it doesn't always appear successful. You right. don't get to brag about it necessarily. Mm. Uh, but but uh, but if you do what He tells you to do, you're going to be a success, you know. Yeah. So I would say listening to the voice of God, listening to His voice, uh, listening to His word, uh, and and knowing His word. But on top of that, I would also say, you know, especially for those of us who have children, yeah. you know, one of the worst things you can possibly do to your child is teach them something that they have to unlearn later. Yeah. And so I would say that, you know, teaching your children things that they don't have to unlearn, teaching them things that they, they need to know. And, yeah. and I would say pouring into your children and even teaching them about money, because if you don't, the financial institutions are ready to be the financial educators yeah. and they're waiting for your children. So it's important to teach your children. And oftentimes we don't know because we didn't learn in school. Sure. So I think a great way to get started is to educate yourself the same way you would educate yourself on blockchain by, you know, by reading books and doing due diligence. We've taught all, anybody who's listening to this and says this makes a lot of sense. Our book is filled with this information. This is all what our book and our ministry is about. Yeah. Uh, so followthemoney.com and our book, Bankruptcy of Our Nation, answers a lot of these questions. That's great. This program is made possible by the generous support of OklahomaBanner.com. Oklahoma Banner is a locally owned company providing custom designed full color banners shipped directly to you. They offer a wide variety of banner products. Visit OklahomaBanner.com today. It's been said that life is about capturing moments. So I encourage you to capture this moment right here and take a picture of my contact information to reach out to me later. It is most important when you find a real estate agent to find one with the ability to communicate with all involved, knowledgeable about the real estate market, and one's ability to negotiate contracts. If you're thinking about buying or selling a home within the next year, reach out to me. I'd love to see how I can help you reach your goals. Thank you so much. What I love is that you're an economist, you're a veteran chin trader, uh, you, you know all sorts of things about investing. And so, and that, that really does play a big yep. part in, in lasting legacy. That's right, so, mm -hmm. leaving a legacy, Yeah, that's right. Jerry, I want to thank you for joining us today on set. Uh, the Young Businessman of Tulsa is really blessed to have you come out of state to speak to our group and yeah. to, to talk with us today yeah. about uh, how to build a lasting legacy and to kind of teach us a little bit about uh, cryptocurrencies and yeah. Bitcoin and the evolving technology. So, mm. um, And what's really cool is we have this on podcast. Last night right. we recorded That's all this great. so people yeah. can go to uh, yeah. iTunes, search Young Businessman of Tulsa. Right. They can go to our website. So. Uh, and I know you have a website too. Where can where can people find you? Yeah, followthemoney.com is the best place to go. Uh, we have a podcast there. We have many different podcasts. We have many different free articles and videos that we've created over the years, PDFs that you can download for free. But followthemoney.com. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Well, thank you so much. I my, appreciate it. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank All you, guys. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, man. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys for uh, tuning in and watching us today on the uh, YBT Lasting Legacy Show. Uh, if you want to find out more information uh, about YBT, uh, how to attend a lunch, uh, you can go to ybtok.com. 
We have monthly luncheons, seminars, and programs that we put on all the time. We even have a great podcast, so if you want to go to iTunes, search for Young Businessmen of Tulsa. Uh, we would love to see you there, and uh, hope you tune in next time on The Lasting Legacy Show. <laughs>